If a psychotic mime who is a little too cheerful about butchering people was stalking you, could you survive? Well, you're wrong, and in this video, I'm going to follow the characters, point out all their mistakes, and show you that even if you made different choices, that you're still f We start off right where the first one left off, Art rising from the dead in the coroner's office. The coroner crawls to the phone to call 911, but unfortunately for him, he can't speak because Art ripped his throat out in the first movie. Not that speaking would have really helped him anyways, he was pretty much screwed. So Art proceeds to bash his face in, then rip his eyes out and put it in his own socket. Art begins to gather up anything he can use to hurt someone in a trash bag, then sets off to the laundromat. After putting his clothes in, he laughs at other people's tragedies in a newspaper when, dear god, there are two of them. This guy suddenly wakes up and sees this. I don't know how you don't immediately get the f out of there. There's no way in hell all that blood comes out of his suit. As Art leaves the laundromat, you get to see what happens when you have poor situational awareness. Now, I hear a lot of you saying that you would not get caught like this and that you would have ran away, but adding the context of it being Halloween night, you might think it's weird, but I think there are quite a lot of you guys who would have just write it off as some dude messing with you and that's how you end up like our friend here. Next, we meet our final girl of the film, Sienna, who is making her Halloween costume. Right away, you can tell her survival instincts are not very good. You can see all these lit candles under her wings where she is spray painting, which is highly flammable by the way. Later, she damn near burns the house down. Maybe all the lost brain cells from using spray paint indoors with no mask on is why she makes so many dumb decisions in this movie. Now it's dinner time. Let's see what they're discussing. The Miles County Clown. His sister and mother don't seem to like that very much. Personally, I don't think it's that weird, but maybe there's something wrong with me too. Later that night, Sienna has a very strange dream featuring our favorite clown. Art starts handing out candy and gives Sienna a very special gift, which is somehow a still beating heart. He then pulls out a gun and wastes everybody. Can't really blame him for this one. Sienna, for some reason, thinks a cereal box is going to be her saving grace. After an intense standoff, she pulls out a sword as Art tries torching her. Since it was a dream sequence, I guess I will give them a pass. As she wakes up, the sword from her dream was on fire and also caught her wings on fire too, implying some Freddy Krueger shit that I guess the dreams can have real world consequences. But this is the only instance in the movie of this happening, so I don't know. Her mother grilling her about the fire, thinking it was the candles that caused it, which I can't really blame her for. I think pretty much everyone would think this. No one is going to believe that a clown in her dream caused a fire. Cut back to our friendly clown, Art, getting his tools ready for Halloween. He sees the interview of Victoria from the first movie, of course laughing when she says that she wishes she was dead. Art has been alive for a year, not sure what he's been doing all this time, the movie doesn't really explain. Jonathan runs into Art and his friend playing with a dead possum. Here, catch! He runs into a teacher and instead of saying anything about the clown, he just runs out of the exit. The teacher finds the dead possum, but of course Art is gone. He should have tried to explain the clown to the teacher. Schools usually have security cameras in the hallways, which they should have checked anyways. But if you made a big stink about it not being you, they would have checked it and seen the clown and probably alerted the police. They might have caught Art before he was able to go on his killing spree. Later, Sienna runs into Art at a costume store. This would be a worst case scenario. He has you trapped all by yourself downstairs in the basement of this place. She chooses to just walk by him, which seems stupid, but she didn't have much of a choice. There is no other exit that I could see, but even if there was one, it would most likely be locked. Otherwise, it would be too easy for people to steal shit. She's just lucky that he doesn't want to kill her yet. Or does that make her unlucky? It seems that Sienna is still freaked out from her earlier interaction. Let's see if Art can make things better. Uh, nope. That just makes it worse. Wanna try again? Still terrifying. Yeah, you really aren't helping. After being left alone, Art ever so sneaky goes up to Sienna and plays his favorite musical instrument. After Sienna leaves, Art locks up the store. Art starts pulling all of this shit out of his trash bag, and I get that it's Halloween, but after his previous behavior, and then this also very odd behavior, the teller should have been more on edge, but he just seemed more annoyed than anything. Get the hell out of here before I fuck you up. Looks like you threatened the wrong clown. I know that some of you are thinking, I would definitely not get my wig split like this guy. 
But if you look at it realistically, most of you would meet the same fate. Especially it being Halloween, you would most likely think it's just some dude messing around, then before you know it, you're taking a beer bottle to the face. But even if you did take this as a threat, what would you do? Running really isn't an option, he's blocking the exit, which he also locked, so taking the time to stop and unlock it, he would definitely catch you. Same goes for a back door. Given the layout of the store, the back door would be locked to prevent theft, so again, you would have to stop and unlock it with Art chasing you. So in order to escape, you would have to at least momentarily incapacitate him. So for most of you nerds who have probably never been in a fight in your life, I don't think this would end well for you. This is why you need a peephole or one of those ring doorbell things so that you can see who is there before you open the door. So you don't open the door to a creepy ass clown trick or treating by himself on Halloween. Allie is upstairs when she hears some glass breaking downstairs and she goes to check it out. Allie comes downstairs to find the glass broken out of the door leading into the kitchen. Um, stop standing there and run, bitch. It's important to stay hydrated when you're butchering people. Why are you still standing there? You can run any time now. When she finally does decide to run, she's forced into a room with no exit. I can't show what he does here, but let's just say that this is one of the most gruesome death scenes I've ever seen. What could Allie have done differently to not end up looking like roadkill? The answer is nothing. At this point, she's pretty much screwed. She has two options, run or fight. Fighting is not a good option. She's unarmed and she's definitely not winning against Art. She chooses run, but where can she really run to? We saw what happened when she ran upstairs into her room. She could have tried running out of this door, but there's broken glass all over the floor and she doesn't have any shoes on, so outrunning Art with broken glass in your feet doesn't seem likely. Running out of the front door was actually what she was trying to do, but Art cut her off. Of course, running sooner would have been a good idea, instead of standing there staring at him forever. But even if she made it to the door, there's no way that she would have been able to open the probably locked door and get outside before Art grabs her. So no matter how you slice it, she's pretty much fucked. Sienna's mother goes into the garage to find her car like this. She should know that her son didn't do it because she walked in like maybe two minutes at most after he ran away. But I do think that most parents would still probably blame their kid because the car was in the garage with no signs that there was a break in. Turns out Sienna's friend Brooke put half a molly in her drink. You fucking bitch. What? Not only do you have to worry about some stranger putting drugs in your drink, but you also have to watch out for your friend too. I don't think I need to explain why this would really hurt your chances at surviving tonight. Back to the runaway. Why the hell would he walk towards this van? On second look, he sees this girl, the one that Art was playing patty cake with earlier. Before, the guy in the laundromat couldn't see her, he only saw Art playing patty cake by himself, but now Jonathan can see her, so I guess she gets to choose who can and can't see her. As Sienna's mother is cleaning up this mess, she gets a nice surprise. Surprise, motherfucker! Honestly, I think she got off lucky. Taking a double barrel sawed off shotgun to the face is going to be a quick and painless death. Most of his victims don't get that. So is there any way that Sienna's mother could get out of this situation alive? I don't think so. Her first encounter with Art is her getting her face instantly turned inside out. So unless she happens to be Neo from the Matrix, she is screwed. Back at the party, Sienna spots Art's friend. This little psycho could be more dangerous than Art himself. She was just honking a horn at her brother and now she is here messing with Sienna by disappearing and reappearing wherever she wants. Also, no one else seems to be able to see her. Jonathan makes his way back home to find his mother being served dinner by Art. Bon appetit. Why does no one in this movie run? See, this bitch was just at the club and now here she is again. Jonathan runs upstairs, which is a bad idea. You have nowhere to escape from up there unless you're just gonna jump out the window. You aren't gonna have time to stop and open the window, so you would have to just take a nose dive straight through it. Doesn't seem like a smart idea. If he would have stayed downstairs and tried running out the front door, he still would have got caught when he stopped to open the door. I don't see any way that he could have escaped here. He was screwed the moment he went home. Sienna, what the fuck was that back there? Um, you drugged her with Molly. I don't think you have a right to get pissy if your friend has a meltdown, even though it had nothing to do with the drugs, not that she could know that. Sienna gets a phone call that sounds like Jonathan, but he's knocked out from whatever Art injected him with, so it turns out that this creepy little clown girl can also mimic people's voices. Sienna goes to look for her brother by herself, 
Splitting up is always a bad idea, but she doesn't really know how much danger that she's in. After getting a text from Art posing as Jonathan, Sienna heads to a haunted house to look for him. Doing drugs while behind the wheel? Real smart idea. I mean, they don't get to drive anywhere, but he didn't know that. And this is every man's worst nightmare. Art just rips this dude's dick off and shows it to his girlfriend. Not much he could do to avoid his fate. The first time he runs into Art was a surprise shot to the dick. Brooke runs into the abandoned carnival and in typical horror movie fashion, she screams constantly while tripping over shit. Instead of getting up right away and running, she takes the time to take off her boots for some reason. She ends up running into this bathroom and getting cornered by Art. Well, I think his weapon is a bit better than yours. Time for an epic club showdown. Just kidding, he throws acid in her face. Art doesn't take fair fights. Not that that would have been a fair fight. After the acid shower, he beats her relentlessly with his club. Sienna comes in from the other entrance. Wait, what? This bitch could have just kept running out the other exit? Okay, she deserves her Darwin Award. Here's Art just savoring Sienna's reaction to finding her friend. He really does love to share his work. Maybe get up and run? Jonathan shows up just in time to watch his sister get the shit beat out of her. Not sure why he didn't kill her right here. I guess he just really wanted to make her brother watch. Too bad her phone got smashed, now she can't call for help. If it was me, I would just haul ass out of there and go get the police. If he can hide until they get there, great. If not, oh well. Art finds Jonathan and cuts him with a scalpel. And as he's laughing at him, Sienna is able to come up behind him and hit him with his club that he left in the bathroom earlier. She actually lands a good shot to the back of his head, but instead of making a pile of strawberry jam on the floor, she leaves the weapon and runs away. Always double tap. I don't care how much pain I'm in. I'm not stopping until the guys with guns show up. Why the f would you split up like this and just stand there? Art shows up again and just starts whipping him with this chain. While he's beating Jonathan, Sienna crawls over top of him to shield him with her body. As noble as this is, it's pretty dumb. Attacking him, or if you're heartless, using this as a distraction to run away would be far more effective. She catches the whip, takes it away from Art, and gives him a taste of his own medicine. I'm gonna have to call bullshit on this one. Catching it like this is really gonna mess up your hand, and I really doubt that she would be stronger than Art to just be able to rip it away from him like this. What would actually happen is that he would just continue to beat her to death and then do the same to her brother. After giving Art a thorough lashing, she rips up a piece of rhubarb and stabs it through his head, and they live happily ever after. Psych, he's not dead. Now you get strangled. God, this kid is useless. In a surprising turn of events, he managed to grab Art's gun off of him. Art tries to play innocent. Don't think that's gonna work for you, pal. After Ghost Clown Girl shows Sienna what Art did to her mother, she hears Jonathan scream in the distance. She goes to find Art standing over Jonathan. After an extremely successful attack, Art chokes her out and throws her down this hole. After Sienna comes to, what looks like a doorway into hell opens up and Art stabs her with the sword that her father left her and drops her through the opening. Art then goes to Jonathan and tries to wake him up because, you know, it's no fun to kill someone in their sleep, not enough screaming. Then it cuts to Sienna trapped in some kind of water tank. Then it shows the people from her dream earlier in the movie singing and laughing as she struggles. Yeah, I don't know, it's a weird movie. As Sienna starts to drown, Jonathan finally wakes up to Art munching on his hand. Then the sword awakens, healing Sienna's wounds. She frees herself, grabs the sword, and then stabs Art in the back, and then slits his throat. As she stands before him, ready to cut his head off, Art happily receives his reward. I think this is obvious, but if a spawn of Satan ran you through with a sword, mystical powers from your father's sword isn't gonna save you, you would just be dead. Part of me hopes that this didn't actually happen and Sienna is just lying there dying and this is her brain's way to cope with what's going on. Just when they think it's over, the creepy clown girl shows up and after a short conversation with Art's head, she takes it and leaves. There is no f way I would let her leave with that thing. Definitely gonna come back to haunt her, probably in the next movie. Now that I've gone through the movie, I'm gonna rate everyone on the death meter. The way it works is a 1 is the best possible score that you can get, meaning that this character made all the best choices given their situation, and a 10 is a character that is really dumb and made all the worst possible decisions that you can make. 
You won't see a 1 or a 10 very often. I'm going to try to reserve those spots for the absolute best and worst characters, which none of them are in this movie, but a couple were close. First up is the coroner. I went over him in the first movie, but I will briefly talk about him again. I don't think that he really did anything egregiously wrong. He just was doing his job and happened to be the one that was there while Art was reviving. So I'll give him a middle of the road score of 5 out of 10. Next up is the laundromat guy. It didn't really show much of him and he died in the exact same spot after seeing this. It seems like he didn't run or even try to escape, so I'm just going to give him a 8 out of 10. I'm not going to rate anyone from the dream because it's a dream sequence and I don't care, so in my mind it doesn't count. Next up is the costume shop owner. The biggest mistake he made was not realizing how much danger he was in. I guess he thought that it was just some dude being a jackass because it's Halloween. But once he started pulling all this shit out, instead of just being annoyed with the guy, he should have been on high alert. So for bad situational awareness, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 on the death meter. Okay, now let's take a look at Allie. She first encounters Art at the costume store when she bumps into him. A bit later, Sienna tells her about her encounter with Art at the store. Later, Art shows up at Allie's house trick-or-treating. As I said earlier in the video, an adult trick-or-treating by himself is a huge red flag. Also, not sure how he knew where she lived. I was thinking maybe he followed her home when they were buying candy, but I don't think so. Art was still in the costume shop holding the owner's head when these people showed up. Anyways, the point is, when Art showed up, she should have taken it as an immediate threat, but she sort of just laughs at it, not taking it seriously. Later, when she hears glass being broken when she's upstairs, then going down to find Art in her kitchen, at this point, there isn't much she could do. Of course, picking up something to use as a weapon before going to check out the noise downstairs would have been something, but really, her only chance to survive this would have been to barricade the door, call the police, and pray they get there before Art gets in. The police's average response time varies pretty wildly depending on where you live. An optimistic response time would be 5 to 6 minutes, but realistically, you're looking at closer to 10 to 15. I really doubt that she would be able to hold out that long. Then again, Art does tend to play with his food, so maybe there's a chance. She did try and run to the front door, but Art cut her off and forced her upstairs. Once Art got a hold of her, she didn't put up much of a fight. Art really just had his way with her. I will give her a 7 out of 10 on the death meter. Next up is Sienna and Jonathan's mother. She really didn't have much of a chance. Her first encounter with Art was her last. She just saw him for the first time and immediately caught a sawed-off double barrel to the face. There isn't anything anyone could have done to survive in that moment. I'm just going to go down the middle with her and give her a 5 out of 10. Next up is Jeff. This guy didn't get much of a chance either. His first encounter was Art coming out of nowhere and turning him into a eunuch. It doesn't really show him die. Art chases after Brooke instead of finishing him off, so it's unclear if he dies from his injuries or not. But because of the driving while impaired and snorting coke when he thinks he's going to drive some more, that's really stupid. I'm going to go ahead and give him an 8 out of 10. Let's take a look at Brooke. After watching her boyfriend become a Ken doll, she ran into the carnival. I would have probably ran down the street away from the carnival, but that's just me. Finding somewhere to hide inside the carnival could have also been a decent choice, but choosing to try to fight him inside this bathroom was really stupid. And I say choose because she could have kept on running. We see Sienna come in from the other entrance in a bit. The fight was never going to go her way, even if he didn't throw acid in her face. So for her poor choices, I'm going to give her a 9 out of 10 on the death meter. Let's go over Jonathan next. His first encounter with Art is in a hallway at school where he sees Art and his friend playing with a dead possum. As he runs away, he runs into a teacher and instead of trying to explain what happened, he just keeps on running. The teacher finds the possum and naturally thinks it's him. If he would have told her what happened, they could have checked the security cameras and seen Art, which she should have done anyways so I'm putting part of the blame on her. The only reason he didn't die right here is because Art wanted to wait and kill him in front of his sister. Later, his sister basically sacrifices herself so that he could run away, but of course he gets caught. Later in the fight against Art, he is completely useless. It would have been easier for Sienna to have beaten Art if Jonathan wasn't even there. He does manage to steal Mr. Mime's gun and shoots him with it, so I guess that's something. Ultimately, it didn't amount to much and Sienna still had to come and save him. After Art dispatches of Sienna one more time, he goes up to the knocked out Jonathan and tries to wake him up. Art could have easily killed him here, but I guess he wanted to wait until he was awake so that he could torture him some more. I was so close to giving Jonathan a 10 out of 10, but because he did manage to shoot Art, I suppose I will only give him a 9 out of 10. Okay, finally let's talk about our final girl, Sienna. 
She first encounters Art in a weird dream sequence that leads to her house almost burning down. Her first real encounter with him is at the costume shop. She sort of just slowly slides past him. Pretty fortunate that he didn't attack her here. She was trapped and there wasn't much else that she could do. I'm not sure if there was another exit down in the basement or not, you can't really tell. But even if there was one, it definitely would be locked to prevent theft. Later, while she's in the car on her way home, she gets a call from the little clown girl posing as Jonathan. She lures her to this abandoned carnival. I'm, I'm not going to give her too much shit for this. I mean, how could she have known that the little girl was going to be able to mimic her brother's voice? Her fight in the bathroom with Art goes about how you would imagine. I feel like the only reason he didn't kill her here is just pure plot armor. Later, after she attacked Art from behind, she could have killed him here, but for some reason she doesn't continue to cave his head in. Here she leaves her brother alone while she goes forward to look around. There is no need for this, just keep going together. Splitting up is stupid. Although if her plan was to leave her brother as a distraction for her to escape, I could have respected that. As Art is beating her brother, she crawls over top of him to shield him. She would have been better off picking up something and attacking him, not just crawling over there like that. When she gets the upper hand and stabs him in the head with a piece of rebar, she turns her back on him. She would have been killed here too if her brother didn't manage to get his gun and shoot him with it. This is not an effective way to attack someone. After Art threw her into the hole, he comes down and stabs her in the gut. This is definitely lethal. The only reason she survives is the mystical powers of the sword her father left her. She made quite a lot of mistakes, so I will give her a solid 8 out of 10. If you made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Also, let me know what movie you'd like to see next down below. And remember, if your dad likes your slutty Halloween costume, Dad would have loved it. Be thankful he is dead.